As far back as I can remember, I've been fascinated by both art and science. As a kid, I wanted to be a marine biologist, and there wasn't a day that went by that I wasn't doing something crafty. Over the years, I had teachers tell me that art and science didn't coexist, that they couldn't live in a world of harmony together, that science stifled creative expression, and that scientists didn't do art. Thinking that they were right, I decided to choose just one as my career. Art was in every fiber of my being, and I just couldn't ignore it. I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to my mind. Everything it does is through a lens of creativity, and curiosity is its partner in crime. This first example is from a college project. I saw this cool car with four headlights, and I thought, like any normal person, that it would make a really cool creature. Or, there's my current passion project. Now, before I show this to you, Please know that I'm actually being serious, so try not to laugh too much. This is Kokomo. Instead of just horseback riding, I decided to let my curiosity and creativity uh, ask a question. I wonder if he wants to make paintings. The answer is yes, and we both love it. As you can see, creativity is in my bones, and curiosity is in my blood. But my curiosity wouldn't let me stay away from science forever. One autumn day, while I was an undergraduate student at the University of Arizona working towards my BFA, I got an email from my mom. She knows that I love both art and science. In it was a link to a Craigslist job. It was for a student graphic artist at some little unknown company called Osiris Rex. I interviewed, got the job, graduated, and eventually became the mission's lead designer, working on all sorts of fun things like patches, pins, posters, and apparel. But ultimately, I found a role that my curiosity and creativity loved, being an artist in the realm of space science. If you haven't heard of the now not so unknown OSIRIS-REx, it's NASA's first asteroid sample return mission. Yes, NASA has artists. I'm one of them. For the last 10 years, my role has been a bit of a mix between a Disney Imagineer and Sherlock Holmes. I ask a ton of questions when I create my art, all of it helps bring the scientists' data and theories to life through color, shape, and composition. In my role in OSIRIS-REx, I learned that my curiosity drives my creative success. That art and science not only coexist beautifully together, but that they need each other. That a picture is indeed worth a thousand words, and sometimes many more for the complex science. And that teamwork does, in fact, make the dream work. I invite you on a short trip back in time with me. The year is 2015. Taylor Swift's song Bad Blood is at the top of the charts, and a new story in the Star Wars universe just released, The Force Awakens. In 2015, the mission hadn't launched yet. That would happen a year later. The spacecraft was still being built, and we certainly didn't know what Bennu looked like yet. The scientists had as much information as they were able to gather from Earth. Information about Bennu's size, shape, and a few other things. Back in 2015, scientists had actually theorized that Bennu was a sandy asteroid. If you haven't been following the mission, spoiler alert, it turned out to be very rocky. One of my main roles on OSIRIS-REx is to take something that we haven't seen, but only have data for, and visualize it. This is where my curiosity and creativity comes into play. The process starts by first having something that we want to visualize. For example, how does the spacecraft collect a sample? Next, I get to sit down with subject matter experts and do something really fun. I get to unleash my uh, curiosity. I turn into an annoying, maybe endearing, uh, little kid that won't stop asking what and why every five seconds. Why are we going to Bennu? What color is the asteroid? Why do you think that it's sandy? Over time, asking these questions, an image starts to form in my mind, but it's blurry. I need to ask more questions. I need to focus that lens and get more detailed. I keep asking questions. Can you walk me through, step by step, one at a time, what happens when the spacecraft samples? Why does it go into a Y-wing formation when it does? Why do we use nitrogen gas? Finally, after all of these questions, my curiosity is ready to rest. 
have a better mental image of what this picture will look like. This is where my creativity comes into play. The process first starts by collecting all of the graphic ingredients that I'll need to create the actual image. A lot of the image that you're about to see comes from the Goddard, uh, NASA Goddard Animation and Video Studio. Once I've collected all those ingredients, I use my creative skill to combine them all together and create the final image. The final image represents, to our best guesses at the time, what we expect to experience at Asteroid Venue. When we are able to collaborate together, scientists, engineers, and creatives, we not only build the actual artwork for the image, but we're able to combine everything together and make the artwork a little bit more accessible. And when we do that, bridging the gap between art and science, the result is understanding. When that happens, the stars are the limit. One of my favorite projects on OSIRIS-REx was our annual poster series. From launch to sample return, I got to make some really cool posters that described our upcoming mission milestones. The vibrant colors pull you in, but if you are willing to look a little bit deeper, each poster has something a little bit more to offer. For example, on the launch poster, on the left side of the image in the background, you see the silhouette of Florida. That's because we launched out of Cape Canaveral, Florida. Each of these posters takes a moment in time, an action that the spacecraft is performing, and freezes it. The arrival poster is an interesting one to dig a little bit deeper into. There's a lot of creative choices happening here. The poster is split in half, top and bottom, light and dark. The dark shape of Bennu is in the top, lighter portion, and it seems a little bit out of place. It pulls your eye in. The stars in hyperspeed further direct your eye towards that shape. The dark, mysterious, unknown Bennu is our focus. Over time, we added each poster in the series, and a highlight reel of all the incredible things that the mission was doing began to form. But the vibrant colors didn't just draw you in. They actually solved a very real creative issue that I was facing on the mission. The science lacks color. Literally. Bennu is an asteroid the color of charcoal, floating in the dark abyss of space. And the spacecraft itself is silver with a little bit of black. So while a pink sunset sky and a purple asteroid might not be the most realistic, it definitely helps to convey the complex science topics in a little bit more of an easy to understand way. And after all the vibrant colors that I used throughout our journey in space, this final poster and final color palette feels a bit more like home. It feels like returning to Earth. Art is an incredible tool they can help us explain complex topics in an easier to understand way. When we do that, the gap between art and science is bridged, and the result is communication. It can help inspire someone who previously thought that STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, was too hard, too boring, or too difficult. Science isn't boring, and the art that describes it doesn't have to be e either. I'd like to take a moment to ask you a question. I want you to form a mental image in your mind. And it might sound a little bit weird, but I want you to think about Valentine's Day. You might be thinking of hearts, flowers, uh, pinks, purples, reds. I'm guessing right now you're not thinking of a NASA mission. That's one way that we had fun with the science. Roses are red, Bennu is blue, space flight is awesome, and so are you. These are just three selections from the set. We have a bunch more online and they're all hilarious. Um, <laughs> uh, the Valentines were a collective effort from the small uh, communications team at the University of Arizona. We connected science in a way that you might not quite expect. If you're willing to come along for the ride, you'll learn something and you're going to have fun doing it as well. The gap between art and science is bridged and the result is communication. And at the end of the day, that's what my work on NASA's OSIRIS-REx is all about. It's a messy but beautiful equation where curiosity informs creativity, but they're not complete without collaboration because big ideas don't happen alone. It's all an intertangled mess, but all the elements support each other and lift each other up. Combine them all, combine them all and you get communication. Effective communication can expand our horizons. It can teach, empower, and inspire. Art and science, seemingly at opposite ends of the spectrum from each other. 
Both seek to communicate incredible things. They're both driven by curiosity. And when they come together, it's magic. Thank you.